Anyway, so this woman decided to one day pack up everything she owned, bought a one-way ticket to Japan. She got to Japan and was in Japan for one day and figured out, damn, it's actually really expensive here. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to survive. First of all, who told you Japan was cheap? Who told you Japan was... Tokyo? Hello? Who told you Japan was cheap? This is how I ended up homeless in Thailand. I booked a one-way flight from Louisiana to Japan. Not having any plans and knowing anything about Japan. I just left. After being in Japan for a day, I realized Japan was extremely expensive and I wasn't going to last it long with the amount of money that I came. So I decided to book a one-way flight from Japan to Thailand. Hidden trip to Thailand with no plans and not knowing anything about the country. After staying in Thailand for five months, I still was not able to obtain income. I still wasn't able to figure out how to make income. I ran out of money. And that is how I ended up homeless in Thailand. This is how I survived in Thailand with only seven dollars. After living in a small village for almost five months, not making any income, I was running out of money. I was down to my last fifty dollars. On January twenty second, I decided to take a risk spending my last fifty dollars on a bus ticket from Chiang Mai to Bangkok and from Bangkok to Pattaya. Then living here only seven dollars to my name. I didn't know what to do. I was worried, but I kept my faith and trusted that God would make a way. After making it to Pattaya, I met with a local expert. I told him my story and he decided to put me a hotel. And things started to get better. Listen, I do understand that what she did is ridiculously crazy considering the fact that she is a black woman. And knowing the amount of things that happen to black people is very careless of her to be this reckless. I also understand the leap of taking faith in the unknown. And that's a lot of things that, in fact, that's a lot of one of those things that we as a society we are afraid of again i emphasize that she is reckless without going into that situation prepared but she came out of it as she said she is now getting better she chose the unknown and the unknown is usually unscary would i do this no i wouldn't do this this would not necessarily also work for everyone this is something that should be taken when you really at the bottom of the bottom. However, people in South Africa here just do not choose to leave their country. We prefer to suffer at home. At least I know my home better. I know there are resources that I can do to make my life better. However, to travel out of my country, out of my own element, to live in a foreign country with a different language, with a different culture, with a different tradition and all this different system that governs that specific country is going to be difficult considering that the race is also a factor. People choose to ignore this crucial point, but your race is a factor even for the native who share the same melanin in those areas as you. Your race will be a factor and those are things you don't just take with a leap of faith. But from where she stood, I understood immediately. I got it. And I was like, okay, it worked in the end. So I'm not really going to heavily criticize her, but the society did. Did y'all see that black lady who's homeless in Thailand right now? So she flew to Japan and realized Japan was too expensive. So she decided to move to Thailand. And after a month, she ran out of money and now she's homeless in thailand first of all she moved with no plan no job no nothing and then you make a tiktok about it expecting us to feel bad but i mean obviously like i feel bad because i don't want anybody to be homeless but girl why would you move out of the country with just a couple thousand dollars and think you're gonna live off that your entire life like make it make sense we gotta do better this is why social media is so dangerous, okay? Because it makes you so fucking emotional. My God. Anyway, first, you had the girl who moved from Florida to, to Texas with her three babies, and, 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 and now she dealing with what she dealing with. Then you had the storage unit couple who uh, played in all y'all faces and said... They said, oh, <laughs> psych. We really like sleeping outside. We really like being homeless because we can't do what we do. And and, and I honestly think that she's the... And he the... <laughs> anyway.
way here. And now, and now you got this girl <laughs> who left the country off of savings and vibes. Who clearly did no research. No research at all. Yeah. Yeah. No research. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think the part that really behooved me is that instead of you buying a ticket back how to America, you said, I'm going to go to Thailand. I'm American. I'm going to get here. I'm more educated. I can speak English. So let me go to Thailand, find some employment, probably be better than them, get paid more than them, and I'm going to be cool. And now, you you you, you walking up dirt roads with vibes, hopes, and dreams. Night ain't nothing wrong with following your heart and following your dreams. But baby, don't bring me into it. Don't bring me into it. If you are not making conscious decisions, don't bring me into it. Because you're making a... Uh, girl, you need to come on home. Okay, come home. Now, if you've watched my video this far, I believe that you are enjoying my content. For that, I thank you and please don't forget to click on the bell icon, subscribe, comment, like. It shows the YouTube that you enjoy such videos. Let's move on. To make matters worse, she said she had $7 to her name when she finished her moving. Like $7 once buying the flights and all, okay? For my visual learner, this, this is what she had. This is what she thought she could make a whole new life out of. This is what she felt safe moving abroad as a black woman to a completely different country she had done no prior research on. This is what she felt safe to... What? It's so hard to hold on to empathy for people who do shit like this. What were you expecting to happen? That's like, that's like two burritos from Taco Bell's worth of money. How did you think you were going to afford rent? Live? transportation utilities laundry like what what the fuck with this with this i hate when y'all prove the americans are stupid stereotype right oh my gosh so y'all remember the girl who moved from florida to houston with her three kids with no money no job and ended up homeless we got um another version of her this lady decided to pack up her life um, no job, just savings, and moved to Japan. After she got to Japan, she realized that it, it was too expensive there based on what she had saved. And so she decided to buy a one-way flight to Thailand. So now she's living in Thailand, and she's homeless after like a month. I honestly think what she did was just like such an entitled way of thinking. You thought you were going to go to somebody else's country. This girl of the United States, you thought you were going to go to somebody else's country, a country that social media has told you is affordable, cheap, blah, 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 for vacation, um, with no job. Nothing lined up. Like you said in the video, I wasn't able to find work. Girl, you shouldn't have moved unless you had a remote job that allowed you to do so. And my thing is, when you got to Japan and realized that it was too expensive, why didn't you come back to the United States? I don't have enough money to live here off my savings, so let me just go to another country. It just sounds like you don't want to work. I, I don't know, but like, like where do y'all get off just moving with no job, no nothing? Like, what, what exactly did you think you were going to do? And like, coming from the United States, you know how hard it is for immigrants to move here and get a job, to get their papers, to get a green card and all of that. Why don't y'all think that that same thing applies when you, an American, moves to another country? That's the, that's the entitlement there. That you think that other places don't also have laws regarding, you know, immigrants and getting papers to work. And like, did y'all just think that that was an American thing? Like, I, I'm not understanding, like, why you thought that this was a good idea. And like I said, with Miss um, Florida Turn Houston, Miss Tally Turn Houston, thoughts and prayers. Um, I hope it works out for you. I know it's going to be hard to get somebody to send you money for a plane ticket back to the United States. I'm sure that plane ticket is very expensive. Maybe you can go live on TikTok and get donations. I don't know. Won't be for me, though. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm crazy and I have a lot of, I don't know, understanding. I cannot say sympathy because my sympathy and empathy really takes a lot you really need to be going through so much that i can relate to or something that i know that was beyond out of your circumstances not things that you brought into your reality consciously that you knew about i'm not really like feeling sorry sorry for her she knew what she was doing she's a grown woman she decided to make that decision to leave her country to leave her home for the unknown so don't 
don't confuse that as as sympathy i it's not them sympathy it's just me understanding so would i give her money no why would i give her money she she's she said she's doing okay and that should be enough for me right so what would else would you expect what else would you expect i don't know like if you go to a foreign country i expect you to be prepared i guess it's, it's an american thing to leave your country for a cheaper country because i also noticed that there are african americans not just african american but americans coming to south africa and saying that our country is cheap is not cheap for the natives it's not cheap for us it's not and i want you to understand that the natives of thailand feel the same way that we feel about our countries that you guys just come in here with your dollar and believe that you are superior to us and tell us that you know the bread is cheaper everything is cheaper but you'll never see us saying that when we go to your country because your country is ridiculously expensive everywhere is ridiculously expensive if the natives are living there you rank up the prices of the people living in those areas and make it the most uncomfortable place for us to live it means that Americans in a way they're chasing their um their uh, you know picket fence you know their American dream they are individualism you know they as long as I'm okay as long as I'm doing okay to help to others to help with the laws to help to everything else because they seem to forget that they are black people even American people who are black in America think to forget, tend to forget that they're black people, that certain laws do not apply to you, you. That's because it worked out for Samantha and her family and they did it. Doesn't mean that you can do it, Kia. Doesn't mean you can't do it. It doesn't mean that. Did I just see a TikTok about this black girl that moved to Thailand with seven dollars for a fucking name and now she's homeless and we supposed to give a fuck? Yeah, y'all heard me, seven dollars. Are we supposed to give a fuck about her being homeless? I got on live yesterday and someone asked me if I had seen the video about the black woman who ended up homeless in Thailand. And since I talk a lot about living abroad and having moved abroad and lived in multiple countries, including in Asia, let's talk about this. It was absolutely stupid and dangerous, and I'm just going to call it what it is. The person moved to Japan, knowing nothing about the culture, nothing about the cost of living, realizing that Japan is one of the most expensive countries in the world, popped on over to Thailand, which is probably where they should have started, and said that they were homeless, that they only had $7 to their name. Now, number one, I tell the story all the time that when I moved to Cairo, Egypt, I moved on a one-way ticket, and I had $400 to my name. But with that story, I always warn people, don't do that especially since we have lived in a global pandemic and currently through multiple wars and genocide. Why ever you will put yourself in a position to where you can't get yourself back to the United States is wild. And in addition with my story of booking a one-way ticket to Cairo, Egypt, I also got a job the day after I landed. Before I moved abroad, I lived in four states. And there was at no point that I would move from one state to the next and not be leveling up. But to move halfway around the world with no knowledge of what it is that you're doing except to make some content is wild. Between the man who was living in the storage unit and the lady that moved to Houston to become an influencer, I'm starting to believe that this struggle content is like a ploy to get people to sympathize so that way you could just get some money. And for those of you who are wondering if there's a way to get back home if you don't have any money, there is. The U.S. Embassy will certainly give you an emergency flight if you need one. However, as I have stated on my platform time after time again, you will owe them. And if you don't reimburse them back for that emergency flight, they will take your passport. But also, what if you can't get home and you out here panhandling in somebody else's country? Have y'all not watched Locked Up Abroad? I am confused. Did y'all hear about that lady that moved to Thailand and wound up homeless? Y'all heard about that? You didn't? Let me tell you. And don't talk about what I have on. Yes, it's cold in this house. Anyway, so this woman decided to one day pack up everything she owned, bought a one-way ticket to Japan. She got to Japan and was in Japan for one day and figured out, damn, it's actually really expensive here. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to survive. First of all, who told you Japan was cheap? Who told you Japan was... Tokyo? Hello? Who told you Japan was cheap? 
Anyway, so once she figures out, hey, Japan is not going to work for me, she buys a one-way ticket to Thailand. Gets to Thailand, and she admits, I know nothing about Thailand. I, I know diddly squat about Thailand. I just moved here. Knows nothing about the country. Knows nothing about the work system. Knows nothing about anything. Just went. Said she was there for five months. Wound up homeless. Didn't get no income. Couldn't couldn't generate any income. What is going on? Now, I'm all for stepping out on faith. But you also need to have a freaking plan along with that faith. It just goes to show me that a lot of y'all just be working off of a thought. All you have is the thought, and you will know further than the thought. Just like the lady that uprooted her fucking kids from Florida to Houston because she wanted to be a content creator. Because she wanted to be a content creator. She had no plan. Had kids. Had no plan. Wound up in a warming shelter. Homeless. A warming shelter. I was like, I thought I was going to come here to be an influencer because all the influencers... Had no following... No real revenue for being, had nothing for real. And decided to move to Houston. He's supposed to magically be an influencer. No. Now, I, I don't want her homeless. I feel bad that she's homeless. I don't want anybody homeless, actually. I feel like everybody should have a place to lay their fucking head. But for you to be that careless to move across the, the world and not have any plan and not know what you're doing is crazy to me. You should at least did some research on something before you left the United States so you can know how things work over in Japan or Thailand or anywhere. You should do some research before going anywhere. You have to research different states when you move. So why would you not have to research a different country? I really hope shit work out for her, but that was a bold move.